So where, in your opinion, where is this all going? What's the trajectory of this? In your book, you talk a little bit about you know, the attempt to overthrow the traditional order, dismantle Western civilization. You ask, is it imploding? Yeah, just after all this study and everything and observing of trends, what do you see as the trajectory? Well, we talked about this at the dinner table. I think that many of the, of the, the examples of, of the left going too far and, and becoming downright authoritarian is becoming obvious to a lot of people. It's not, just the facts of the matter are not that hard to make. What's happening in the campuses, what's happening uh, in the courts and the like. And uh, I think that one of the reasons why Donald Trump got elected is because there were a lot of Americans out there who just felt that the country was slipping away from them and this guy stood up and said, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna talk that way. I'm just gonna call it the way I see it. And they go, finally, somebody has the courage to stand up and call something the truth. Now, whether or not he fully understands anything I'm saying here tonight, I'm not saying that. But I think that you know, he was sensing something in the country that they were sick and tired of being called deplorable. So there is something there. Uh, the other thing is, is that a, a, a lot of this philosophy that I talk about that was created in the universities for the last 40 years was put together by intellectuals and they and they were teaching students, and the students would go out and, and become teachers in elementary schools and high schools and other colleges. And so that's how it was disseminated in the culture. But it did start, frankly, in the universities. Um, all very sophisticated people, um, you know, very educated. But as, I was, as we were explaining uh, the other, at the dinner table, let's say that you're a truck driver. And let's say you've not had a college education. And so you don't know anything about deconstructionism. You haven't heard of Jacques Derrida. You don't know any of this stuff. But you go on the news and you see some guy who calls himself Chelsea Manning claiming he's a woman. And you're sitting there thinking, I, well, I, OK. But he's not. <laughs> I mean, and then, and then he looks around and goes, why is it I have to say this again? I mean, it's completely outside this cultural debate that we're talking about here. Mm -hmm. But the point is, is it, it just, when you start going against reality and playing facts in front of your nose cannot be accepted and they must be called something different. And that's, that's what postmodernism was saying. They were saying facts are fiction. And this, this, is where, this is their intellectual tradition. This didn't come out of nowhere. Uh, we actually have to fight back and say, no, it's not fiction. There are certain things that are real. Are we going to stand up for the truth? But I must say that one thing conservatives we're not doing well enough is we're not fighting on the liberal intellectuals' turf. We're not fighting in, in, their, in their world. First of all, they don't want to let us on campuses, for one thing. That's one of the reasons why they don't, they just won't want to let us there, because they know that if we stand up in front of you know, anybody with half a brain, not a lot of this is not that hard to, to dispute. Um, but on the other hand, uh, some of my conservative uh, intellectuals are missing the boat, and they don't realize what they're up against. They don't realize that they've lost the culture, and they need to fight back and get it back. They think that they can just do legislation in Congress or elect the right president that'll do the trick. It's not enough. You have to do what the new left did in the 60s. You have to retake the institutions. If you ta retake the institutions, the politics will follow. But it's long, hard work, folks. Um, it's long and hard. It's not really about politics. It's, it's about joining the PTA and the school boards and not letting nonsense uh, about identity politics work their way in there. I, I sit on boards in Washington and it's, I'm always the token conservative. And there's 14 other board members, all of them liberal Democrats, and I'm the one with conservative Republicans sitting there. So they'll start, they'll start passing resolutions and I'm always the skunk at the party. I'm always saying, wait a minute, why are we doing that? You know, and they go, okay, he's from the Heritage Foundation. We know what he thinks. You know, and, and so we're always outnumbered. So we need to get the numbers up on these boards. And so we have not just one lone conservative voice and have everybody telling us uh, whatever they think is, is you know, the, the cause of the day. So I'm, even though it's a dire situation, you know, you can't, it's, maybe it's darkest before the dawn because you can't really know what it is you need to do until you know what the problem is. And the problem isn't just politics, it's culture. Hmm. It's ideas, and it's a refusal to be intimidated by, by new age rhetoric. And, and, and it's what you get in the movies, and you get it on TV. You know, individual freedom 
as the American understood it, was a constrained idea. It was constrained by religion and by natural law and an obligation that I had to other individuals. That's how it worked. It wasn't about whatever I thought or wanted to do or what I felt like doing. It wasn't a, that, that's considered to be selfish by most people who understand morality. And yet that's what today passes for social justice. 